they may spend hundreds of dollars in this plant thinking it is like the most beautiful thing they ever seen and the plant will die it will not stay alive it doesn't like a plant doesn't survive without chlorophyll so it's just like basic biology of plants don't be that person don't buy that plant hi friends so today we're going to talk all about variegation the different types of variegation we can get in the plants and how the plants get this variegation and how rare it is to find a variegated plant in nature so if you're new here my name is larissa and in this channel we try to make plant parenting easier by explaining how plants work so today we're going to talk more about the dynamics of how plants end up variegated and in one of our next videos we're going to go actually online shopping so you can see the different prices of variegated and non-variegated plant so you can understand what a little speck of white or cream can do to the price of a plant. Okay, so first of all, what's variegation? I think by now everybody knows what variegation is, but basically is the specks of white, uh, cream, yellow, sometimes pink or red or even purple. Basically these spots of the plant that are not green. The word variegated comes from the Latin word variegatus, which means made of various sorts of colors. So it's like a variety of colors. So basically everything that is not green on the leaf. And how do plants end up with these parts that are not green? Because the green parts of the plant are the, pla are the parts that have chlorophyll and this is like crucial for the plant to live. The chlorophyll is the part of the plant responsible for photosynthesizing. The more the plant has it, the better. So how does the plant get this non-green parts? Basically, it has a lot to do with genetics. So when the plant is growing, it of course is multiplying its cells. So every time the cell divides into two, the genetic material is copied. And we learn in school that if you do that enough times, some of the material will end up a little bit different over time. So basically it's kind of like a mutation. Some cells come up with chromosomes that inhibit the cell to create chlorophyll. So this white part are parts that don't have chlorophyll basically. So for the plant, that's actually bad news because if a plant has a leaf that is completely white, that leaf is useless for the plant and the plant is using energy to keep that leaf alive. So that's why it's so rare to find heavily variegated plants in nature because uh, over time the natural selection will erase the white parts of the plants because they tend to become more efficient over time so the plant even if it's going through like a stress situation where there's little light the plant will shed out the parts of the plant that are less efficient the most variegated ones so that's basically what occurs and inside the variegation realm we have different types of variegation and different ways for variegation to occur so the first one is what they call like natural variegation is the type of variegation that is already part of the plant species for instance this calathea ornata is a characteristic of the plant this pink stripes so every new leaf that this plant's going to put out is going to come like this because this is like embedded in the genetic code of the majority of the cells. I can propagate this a thousand times and probably 999 percent, 999 times it, the leaves will come exactly like that because this is just part of of the plant. In the long run, this is the normal state of the plant when the all the divisions and the mutations go perfectly normal. The plant is always going to be like that. Another type of variegation we see is called the chimeric variegation. And chimeric comes from, uh, you know, those mythic creatures uh, in mythology, the chimeras. Uh, so it comes from that. It's basically a weird mutation. 
So chimeric variegation is basically that. It's like a plant that normally doesn't have variegation, like for instance, uh, this rabbit foot maranta is like two plants in one here, but it doesn't really have any variegation normally. And one day, uh, one of these chromosome divisions went a little bit different and it just starts to have these cells without chlorophyll in it. And these cells start to multiply and then it took over big parts of the plant. And now we have like big specks of white that you can see with your naked eye. Basically is the part of without chlorophyll that is reproduced a lot. So there is natural variegation and chimeric variegation. And inside the chimeric variegation, you can still have different types of variegation. So the chimeric is relatively unstable. So you see a lot of plants uh, reverting back to green because uh, the plant is prioritizing the type of cell that creates chlorophyll because that's the type of cell that will keep the plant alive. So there is a tendency in the plants with chimeric variegation for the green parts to eventually overcome the plant. But there are different types of variegation into that random uh, genetic accident type of variegation. The first one is what they call periclinal. So I'm going to put an image here so you can have an idea. But basically, the leaves have several layers of cell, like the human skin, for instance. And in the periclinal type of variegation, the cells that are in the, one of the layers, they start to mutate when they're reproducing and the whole layer mutates. So the cell reproduces like kind of horizontally, but because there's the layers on top have chlorophyll, you end up seeing this kind of variegation that is on the edge of the leaves. The first layers of cell end up in the center of the leaf. And this first layer doesn't always go all the way to the edge of the leaf. So when you see a, plant, a leaf like this that is variegated on the outer borders of the leaf, it means that this white part here is the second layer of cells because the first layer has chlorophyll, but it hasn't expand all the way to the leaf. And it was only, end up only being in the middle and in the borders that is the second layer that has no chlorophyll. So, just to recap, we have, we're talking about two different types of variegation, the natural variegation that is part of the plant, the chimeric variegation that is uh, like a genetic accident. And one of the types of genetic accidents that can happen is the periclinal variegation that is the most stable type of accident, the type of accident that is more likely to happen again, so the plant is more likely to stay variegated like that. Uh, that is the second type of chimeric variegation, this variegation that happens by accident, that is the mericlinol, is when the layers, uh, the cells inside the layer is try, is start to reproduce uh, in this different type of cell, but they don't reproduce all the way across the layer. So you would have half of the leaf variegated on the border or half of the plant variegated. And this is a very unstable type of variegation, so I can't even find examples. And the third one is the sectorial variegation. So this is the third type of genetic accident that can happen with the plant. And this is the type we see the most in the shops. That's the Thai Monstera Thai constellation, the Monstera Albo, the, the super pricier variegated plants we see. And this is the, the type of variegation that is happening in this red food maranta when you have like patches of white or cream. What happened is instead of uh, the cell that has this mutation instead of it reproducing horizontally, it starts to reproduce uh, deeper inside the cells to like become this block of cells. So that type of variegation is relatively unstable. So 
it's not likely to occur and keep occurring in nature. People tend to recreate that in the nurseries, in the big greenhouses. That's why sometimes people buy a plant that is variegated. They take the plant home, they put in their own like conditions that maybe are not ideal and the plants start to go green because the greener part of the plants are always going to be stronger than the variegated type of plant and they can't overcome it. And there is a third type of variegation. So we talk about the natural type of variegation, the way that the plant is just like that. We talk about the chimeric type of variegation that is like a genetic accident. And the third one is called the blister or reflective variegation, is when you have the silvery patches on um, plants. And this is not so much that this, the layers of cells are, have chlorophyll or not. These are actually tiny uh, blisters of air, tiny bubbles of air between two layers of cell that create this illusion of a silvery patch, but this is kind of air inside the plant like I wonder if you could pop it but no they're like really tiny it's just it creates this illusion of on the plant and I believe this is relatively stable I haven't heard a plant silvery plant reverting back to green I think it end up being part of uh, how the plant is uh, sometimes and I've seen this in very uh, desired type of plants somebody sometimes somebody posts a plant online that's almost entirely white almost entirely variegated with almost no green don't buy this plant because this plant is very likely going to die if you have one leaf that is completely white that leaf doesn't survive so many people out there they may spend hundreds of dollars in this plant that's completely white thinking it is like the most beautiful thing they ever seen and the plant will die it will not stay alive it doesn't like a plant doesn't survive without chlorophyll so it's like basic biology of plants don't be that person don't buy that plant so naturally the variegated plants if you have two plants one variegated one not variegated the variegated plant will need more light always because you need more exposure to light to compensate for the parts of the plant that lack chlorophyll and if you sometimes you put the plant in a low light condition uh, if you saw my video of the Marble Queen versus No Queen, you can understand this better. If you put a variegated plant in a low light condition, this plant is more likely to revert back to green because it will ditch the parts of the plant that doesn't have chlorophyll because it's desperate for chlorophyll. So that's what happened. I believe that's all for today. Uh, if you like this video, we're also gonna like this one in which I talk about the Marble Queen and Snow Queen phenomenon and how variegated they are. And that's all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.